Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. When I was a kid growing up, a cigar box was highly prized as a container for your stuff. Stuff could be your dad's World War II dog tags, or your favorite marbles, a yo-yo, baseball cards. I particularly was fond of, of Roy Tan and Swisher Sweets. My guest today takes old cigar boxes and turns them into musical instruments. His name is Brian Parks. He teaches art at Mayfield High School. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So how does one take a rather mundane cigar box and turn it into a musical instrument? Well, uh, you know, the saying with, among these people like me that make these is that you just take a box and, and put a stick in it, and that's kind of the, the directions. I mean, the, the neat thing about all this is that there, there is no exact plan to use. It's just you, with whatever stuff you have around, making a primitive instrument. I, I like to refer to them as primitive instruments because I don't want someone to pick up one of these thinking that it's going to play like a, a Martin or a Fender or something like that because it's not. It's going to, it might rattle a little bit. It might have one spot that's a little rough or something like that or, or chatter. You know, it's just, but that's what gives it sort of its, its uh, individuality of a, of a custom instrument but it's, it's really more of a primitive kind of thing, too. Well, what's the history of, of when did people start making uh, musical instruments out of cigar boxes? Well, uh, as far as we know, I think before the mid-1800s, maybe even a little bit earlier, cigars were, were all packaged in large crates and, and large barrels. And around those, that early 1800s, they switched to the smaller boxes. And uh, that's, that's the earliest that these instruments could have been made, probably, you know, by people that had no money, just poor people making do with what they could, but still having this, this desire, this passion to want to make music. Uh, the earliest one, I think that earliest image that they have is Civil War era. There's an etching someone made of someone playing one. And the founder of the Boy Scouts, uh, he published the first plans for building one uh, in one of his books in the Could summer. probably get a merit badge for it or something. I, you know, I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, it yeah. was uh, an evening with Uncle Enos or something like that was what it was called, the book, and, yeah. and there was plans in there. And so, you know, there's a whole history after that. Most people probably associate cigar box guitar with Bo Diddley or somebody like that who used one throughout his career. Uh, if, you know, next time you're in Chuck E. Cheese, God forbid, uh, you might notice that Chuck E. Cheese is playing a cigar box guitar. A lot of people don't he notice is. that until, I, until they've seen this and I point out, you know, of course, most people are unfamiliar with the instrument. I'm like, well, maybe you're not so unfamiliar with right. it if you've right. been in there for any right. length of time. Right. Well, uh, pick one up and play it and, and maybe explain before you do it how you made this particular one. Uh, well, you know, you, you really want a wooden box. Uh, newer, cigar, newer cigar boxes, since companies are going a little bit cheaper, uh, may only put one or two wood panels in. I think the wood helps season the cigar or something like that. I'm not sure exactly on that since I'm not a, not a smoke or anything. Uh, and then you're going to want to put some kind of, some kind of neck. Uh, and then, you know, the big thing is your bridge and the nut and the strings, the tension, that's all, you know, You've heard of, I don't know if you've ever heard of old blues players learning to play by wire connected on their porch. They're playing their front porch, just thumping the, the wire or whatever. You know, so that's going to give you the sound. The, the box is the resonator, so when the string vibrates, it's vibrating on this pin here, which vibrates this top panel. And that is, you know, and then you of course have your sound hole. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of people think the sound hole has to be under the strings, but that's not where the real sound happens with the vibration here, out of here. And so however you set it up, you, know, you don't even have, have to use tuners. There's like ways of doing it with, with bolts and nuts and wing nuts and all that kind of stuff to get even more primitive. Uh, this particular one, you know, I'd found myself when I first started making these, because I'm not a musician, I'm not a carpenter, I'm not a luthier. I'm, I'm an artist, and, and uh, just exploring this, I wanted to approach it like these people would have that are needing to make music and this, this whole primitive kind of idea. And so I found myself, uh, as I've been making these, getting more and more advanced, getting more and more equipment, and 
you know, oh, I need to plane this super smooth and I need to measure these all exactly. So with this one, which I made uh, at the end of last year, I wanted to go back to basics with just no frills, doesn't have frets, you know, screws are put in place for the fret markers. My uh, friend Rod Stevenson, uh, who is probably the best guitarist that I've ever met, he gave me these old tuners that he had laying around. And uh, so it was sort of the inspiration to have those old tuners. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to uh, just build a box that, you know, this was all brand new. I've just aged it, so it's all kind of, uh, oh. you know, this was a brand new box and I took all the stickers off and, and aged it with shoe polish and all kinds of stuff like that. That's a door hinge pin and this is the other end of it. You know, and that's, this is like a closet door handle that I've crudely put that pattern into and just, just aged it up. This is a stick that I, you know, a piece of wood I got from Lowe's and I just made it look like an old tobacco stick something like that so anyway a lot, you know a lot of that's just the artist in me wanting to make it look old sure. and, and authentic so well, i was going to ask you how old that box was and yeah I, I thought probably about a, probably about a year you could have told me 1920 <laughs> and i would have believed it so when you don't have frets on there to make you know it's the it's the length of the of the wire that gives you the different notes and usually on a guitar you have the metal frets which you can see on some of these others and when you push the string down that string is pushing up against that metal which makes the length of the string shorter so when you don't have that if you ever see people with slides on their fingers a lot of times they're metal this is actually an old glass pill bottle that uh, I guess an old blues player would like to use then you, you don't actually even bend the string down you're just touching it to provide the the different links. So let's see what, what happens here. Anyway. That's, that's very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Um, you also have, here's another one back in the back that you can actually see uh, uh, the, uh, the brand on it. Right. Uh, which proves the authenticity, I suppose, of that. <laughs> uh, what's the story of that? Now that one's a little fancier. Uh, you know, I, the color was on here and I, I wanted the neck to to match. You know, I make the neck too and tilt the neck back, uh, the headstock back. So how, how did that. you make the neck? Yeah. Well, uh, you, you buy the stock at, at Lowe's and then it's just a matter of you have like this rasp. It's just like a, it looks like a cabbage uh, chopper or something except a little bit longer. And, yeah. and I just spend, you know, forever rounding that off and then sanding it. Any particular type of hand. wood you prefer? Uh, the cheapest ah. <laughs> right now that yeah. I can find. You know, it, it, I want it to be primitive and I, and I fight the urge. Some builders are, are really, really high level builders uh, and I'm just not there yet, you know, I, uh, to invest that much in it when it's supposed to be a primitive instrument. I don't know, sometimes I feel like that would be a uh, counter. Well now, the curve it. like this, is that all one piece of wood or if you glue that on? It's, it's, a, it's the same piece of wood and, and you do what's called a scarf joint cut, a scarf cut, and you uh, slice it at an angle and then you flip the wood over and it bends back and then you take the same pieces of wood that you've chopped off previously to, you know, th these little flare out wings are added also, they're glued on. So it's, it is all from the same piece of wood but it's been cut and repositioned to, to look like it just bends back. Also knows it has your has your name on it. Uh, you know, I'm not really a business or anything, but and that's just a little fake company I came up with in college yeah. that that I still put on stuff all the time. Well, let's play this and see how. Right. It well, this one is is uh, more of a dulcimer. You've ever heard of a dulcimer oh, yeah, mountain sure. instrument? Right, right. They remove out uh, a lot of the fret, so you're always in. You can't go out of key. That and that's I'm not. That's probably why so many people, you know, could play those instruments a long time ago without any kind of training. So, uh, no matter what, you can't hit a wrong note, kind of. So I'm just going to hit, I'm just going to fret on the bottom one here. And so, just a full fret. I mean, you, you can't, you know, anyone could probably pick this up and play it, which is, I think, what's appealing about these instruments is 
it's pretty much anyone can pick it up and and feel like they're doing something. Like right. I said, I'm not a musician really either. So. Well, that definitely has a different sound to it than the other one. Uh, it's probably just the tuning. It's tuned in a little yeah. more dulcimer yeah. kind yeah. of. Uh, to kind of branch out, here is a banjo. Uh, is that a cigar box also? or No, this was my son's uh, tambourine that he had when he was a kid. and. You know, it just stuck in his room forever, and I walked by one day and thought, you know, I'm going to do something with that. And so I just... Did you know, he I, object? No, oh, not until I'd made it. And he was like, that was mine. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, I took out the little the little uh, jingle jangle things there. And, uh, you know, it's not the best playing instrument. I could have spent, you know, a little more time fine-tuning it, but... But you know, it's out of tune right now, I think. But but it is strange how it can a little thing like that can wow. produce a right. a banjo kind of sound. I guess one of the more obvious questions ought to be is where do you find cigar boxes? Because I'm not a smoker either, but you go in a convenience mart and you, and you see them. You don't see boxes like that. Like when I was a kid, men who smoked cigars bought them in boxes like that. Right. You know, it was a real problem when, uh, well, first I, I should probably tell you how I even got interested in making this. Because it probably, probably answers this question as well. Uh, several years ago, I had a, in my advanced art class uh, at the last time of school, I always had them choose something they wanted to invest their time in and make. And I had a student who, you know, wasn't really interested in doing anything so I was just trying to find something for him oh you to have do. students like that yeah. too <laughs> every just once every oh, of course few years. very uh, rare and so you know I knew he was he was really interested in music and I said you know why don't we try to make some kind of instrument I had no idea what a cigar box guitar was and, and so you know he was, he was like, all right so I started looking around to try to help him uh, and so the first thing I did was like Google handmade instruments and look on uh, different places like that, and I ran across a, a, a YouTube video by the, uh, Make Magazine, and and they made one out of the, one of the cardboard cigar boxes, and but it was enough to intrigue me. It was it was a very primitive instrument, but it still worked. So I showed it to him, and and uh, he was like, "All right." And so I said, "Well, you just need to find a box, and uh, I'll maybe I'll try to do one too." And so anyway, he he uh, we looked and looked, and the most we could find was the cardboard boxes, the the ones that uh, I just wanted it to be wooden. I wanted it to have that uh, authentic feel. Mm -hmm. Finally, I just ended up buying a, a craft box from a Hobby Lobby, and that's what this was the first one that I built here. The one with the uh, with the with the butterfly theme on it. This was the first one that I ever built, uh, and I just fell in love with it. Uh, I mean, I just so I thought, you know, this isn't authentic. I want a real cigar box, uh, and so we. You, you can order them online and on eBay. Uh, went to local discount tobacco stores and uh, you know choked my way through the back. And the, the lady would sell sell some to me, but she never had quite enough. Uh, and now I found some places here in Paducah, some of the spirit shops and things like that, that they just have stacks of them at the front door. And you can you could buy a, a box that's brand new. Uh, incidentally, never never been in a smoke environment, <laughs> so they don't. Ironically, so they don't uh, smell or anything, and for like two dollars, you know. So it's it's a you could build an entire guitar if if you were really going no frill no frills for you know twenty to thirty bucks, mm -hmm. and just use basic hand tools probably. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, he he never ended up building an instrument by the way. <laughs> and now I can't stop. It's like just you know wow kind of yeah. a so a, a roughly average. How long does it take you to build one? It's the you know, it really depends on how much you're putting into it. Like, if you're gonna go, like this this one right here, although it's my favorite one, you know, the Tom the big Tom took aging the wood, making it look old and just having fun with it. But I didn't put any frets on it or anything like that. It really, you know, if if we were just wanting to build something that would be playable, we could do it in an afternoon probably. If you had you know all your stuff there, uh, if if you're gonna go along the lines of being a little more fancy, like you were saying, and, and you know, you've got the frets in place, everything is measured out perfectly and just right, and you're putting logos on it, and 
and all that, then, you know, it may take, you know, three or four afternoons if you're really hustling, but sometimes it takes me two weeks. Depends on if I'm looking for just the right piece or component to mm -hmm. put on it to, to make well, it look. What tools do you use? Well, with this one, the first one, which uh, I have a YouTube channel uh, where I actually show demonstrations on how to make these and all that stuff. And this one... How would one access that? Parks Art is the name of the channel, just my last name with art, kind of like my logo on there. And uh, way back in the history, you'll, if you go through my videos, you'll find a, like a seven or eight part series on me making this. And I still go back and look at that every once in a while and think, oh, that was, a, I shouldn't have done that that way or whatever. But, but uh, anyway, you know, it just depends. Like the frets on this one are actually just nails. And so I was just, I clipped the nails and glued them on and, and filed them down. Really depends on, you know, what are you going to use for all this stuff. For me, the length of making it sometimes depends on my search for material. Like going to Lowe's and taking a countertop sample, you know, because they're free. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's uh, you know, Corian, I think is the name of that material. Uh -huh. And that's what I make most of the, the nut pieces out of is that kind of stuff, uh, you know, or trying to find different things. I don't want to make the same guitar over and over and over, so I keep trying to put my mind in the place of that person, you know, 100 years ago, mm -hmm. burning desire to make an instrument, but only has this stuff at their house. What would they use? So for me, you know, it's kind of like that. I'm, I don't want to make the same thing all the time. And some of your guitars are amplified, aren't they? Yeah, uh, this one is too. And, uh, I mean, this one actually opens up. You can actually, you, know, you can see the few components I've got in there. Oh yeah, but uh, but even the the materials you use to make that amplification is you know two dollars or something like that. It's not a a big investment financially to make one of these, which lends itself to the whole purpose of the instrument. Mm -hmm. You also had a. Uh had a show of these at the uh, Ice House Gallery in Mayfield. Have you showed them other places? I have not. The Ice House was the first time that I'd, that I'd ever publicly shown my, my stuff. It's funny, on my YouTube channel, I have, I have more subscribers than I have Facebook friends, and I don't know any of them. Uh, and so I've always, and I belong to, I belong to an online community that uh, Handmade Music Clubhouse is the, the, the main one that I belong to, and, and uh, you know, this whole, I'm not the only one making these. It's, a, it's just a whole underground, like, little community, uh, mostly started by Ted Crocker. I always like to give him credit because uh, he's, a, he's a nationally known builder of these instruments, and he's, he's made instruments that, he, that uh, you know, country music stars are playing. They're, they've been in movies and things like that, but he still makes the primitive instruments. He's really a big inspiration of mine. He's the one who founded that community that I belong to mm -hmm. and so you know I go to him for advice things like that uh, but yeah the Ice House show uh, was the first time I ever showed anything and I was kind of nervous because it was my friends and and community people you were there uh, you know you just don't know if people take these seriously I'm like I said I'm not a musician I'm not a luthier I'm a visual artist and and it's uh, but the Ice House is a uh, it was a great experience it, I thought it was a huge turnout I was was really and you sold a few didn't you i did including I did. one you didn't want to sell uh that's right <laughs> this right here i, I did not you really priced it to, thinking really it would be too high and I someone did. bought it i did and it was a friend that bought it and i'm i'm very very grateful for that and you know if, as with all not just guitars just as for me as an artist if i hold on to stuff too long it makes me i don't know what the well i don't know what the right word would be it makes me not want to continue creating because it's like, well, I've got this. Look how I really like this. Uh, I get sort of a complacent, I complacent, guess. Right. a little narcissism or something with my <laughs> with my work. So for me, it's best to try to give it away or or uh, or whatever I can do just to push it out the door to to make me continue working. Mm -hmm. People always people always walk into my house or ask me. Students ask me all the time. I bet at your house you have your work just all over the walls. I'm like, not really. I, I'm a if it, my choice, it would be blank room with just, you know, uh, bare essentials. I'm not a mm -hmm. decorative kind of person because I feel it disturbs what I'm working on at the moment because I get too caught up in what's mm -hmm. on the walls mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Well, you mentioned the, the first student uh, never made a guitar. Have any of your students 
any other of your students made a guitar. They have. Uh, after that, when, I think once people, even, even that student, it was towards the end of that term when I had finished this one, and I think there was a part of him that was like, I wish I'd have followed through and brought that <laughs> box. And uh, the next year, I had three or four students uh, work really hard, and they made it into some to the regional art show for high school. And uh, this past year, I had a student, uh, Bryce Hayden, who is just, he, he is a prodigy player. I really respect him as a player, and that's why I asked him to play. He brought the one that he had made and played it during the reception, right. which I thought really right. added a lot to the right. reception. Right. Does he play it in public, or do, do, you, do you play it in public? I, I play in uh, at church in our praise band with Rod Stevenson, who I mentioned before, and you know, so uh, he's really the sh he's really the show. I mean, God's really the show, but but then uh, guitar wise, Rod is the show, and so you know, it's it's just for me, it's it's a real honor to be able, able to be even on the same in the same band with with him. Right. For sure. Well, in the time we have left. <clears throat> Why don't we go around the table and maybe talk about some of these others? Or I'll tell you what, Duke, play that one a little bit more. Well, okay. I'm not sure that it's in tune. I haven't played it in a long time. Uh, this one, the reason that the butterfly theme and all that was sort of a little, it was the first one I built, and my mother-in-law had, had just passed away, like, pretty right before this, mm. and I, she loved butterflies, so I, I always try to oh. incorporate butterflies and stuff. Uh, that really lends itself to, to the blues sound. It really does. It, it, we could go around the table naming every blues person that you could think of from that, you know, Jimi Hendrix, all, all of them started off, B.B. King supposedly started off playing cigar box guitars. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, can you set let's that one say, up Yes, there? I can. And uh, let's take a look at... How about this one? This is also fancy. Yeah, I think this one is the uh, probably the prettiest one that I've made. Uh, it it does have a pickup, but I, you know, I order, I do order my tuners from. Uh, up there's. That's how big this is getting. There's a, there's a, a fella. His, his company's name is CB Giddy. If you just look that up, you'll find us. If anyone's inter interested in making these. Uh, he probably sells 90% uh, to all, anyone making these. He's, he's their go-to guy. He, he, I think he, he's now full-time. That is all he does is sell parts. Like he'll sell tuners, strings. Because, you know, if, if you're, if you're uh, only using three or four strings every time, buying six packs of strings, you, you end up being kind of wasteful. And so he sells them just with the strings you need. Like you can buy a pack of three strings for specific tuning and uh, it helps you, you know, it saves and he's, and he's really cheap too. Uh, so anyway, I ordered all this stuff from him to, to kind of shine this one up. It's all uh, gold and, you know, once again, I aged this box. I just want, it was a brand new box and I, I put the, the tones all on it and took some mineral spirits and intentionally, a, you know, made it look worn out even on the, the neck on the back, you know, all these scrapes and stuff, you know, it was perfectly painted <laughs> when, I, when I first oh, started. Oh, you deliberately and, Yeah, it. and I sand it off and, and scuff it up like it's been around for a long mm -hmm. time. And, the, the, you know, if you're seeing the leather straps, that's just left over from the ice house where they were right. hanging on display. So. Well, let's see how that one sounds. Yeah, great. So I'll we'll put that one back, and you choose one of the one of the two over on that side. Uh, you know, I, this one actually is owned by. Uh, I haven't sold very many, but this one's owned by our uh, good mayor Teresa Cantrell. Well, I does think she play? well, she bought it for her son. Does she she doesn't play. She doesn't, but her son is oh, a musical mastermind, a, oh, he is, and he yeah. collects <clears throat> rare, you know, eclect just real strange instruments. If you go to their house, he has like different kinds of drums and things like that. And so uh, 
there was a, you know, he was a huge band person, as you know. Oh, all uh, state, all everything. And he's the UK, University of Kentucky right. music major, right. So when he was in high school, you know, I really respected him. I would go up on a Sunday to do something in my classroom, and there would be one vehicle parked outside, and I would walk in, and I would hear the xylophone playing. Oh, yeah. And people always wonder why he's so good. Yeah. That's why he's so good, because he came in on days that nobody else would be there just to keep playing because he loved it. There was a guitar, an old scrappy guitar in that band room. It fell over one day and, and the neck broke in half. The headstock, all that was left was about this much and, and this is it. And so I, I fastened it on to this wood right here and uh, sort of built this whole guitar. Uh, and that's, that's why, this is why I built this one for him was because, I don't know, Mojo, you know, like this was, this was something from his band room and I thought it would be kind of a neat, uh, uh, right, kind right. of a little connection yeah. there. And so, uh, you know, the, people get a kick out of this because, you know, those, if you look at most cigar boxes, the, the sound hole covers and things are usually like sink drain covers and things like that. Is that, that what that is? Yeah, it is. It's I was going to guess maybe a shower there. head or something. So, yeah. uh, so anyway, I really, yeah. like, I really like this and I don't think it's uh, tuned right now. I'd say that about all of them. Don't <laughs> Anyway. That's it, a great story behind that one. And this one, uh, sort of a, a rocker kind of one. I actually have a magnetic pickup in it. So if you amped it, it it's going to sound a little more uh, electric than the other ones that are plugged in. Uh, it's a, probably my favorite, one of my favorite ones to play. Very good. We are about out of time, <clears throat> but I would request, if you would, to uh, to play as the credits roll. How about <laughs> that? We have a, we have a normal theme, but uh, we'll just have you uh, have you do that. Uh, my guest today was Brian Parks, art teacher at Mayfield High School, and crafter of cigar box guitars. And as we exit the program today, and the credits roll, enjoy his music. Thank <laughs> you.